Hi, Roman here with Cisco Tech Advanced Threat Solution Cloud Security Team. Today, I want to show you how Forensic Snapshot works. I start with Q&A about the terminology and functionality and end with a live presentation that triggers and creates Forensic Snapshot. I begin with frequently asked questions. What is a compromised machine? A compromised machine is an endpoint that has an active compromise. A compromised machine can by design only have one compromise active at a time. So what is a compromise? A compromise is a collection of one or more detections on the machine. Most detection events can generate or become associated with a compromise. However, there are pairs of events that do not trigger a new compromise. For example, when threat detected event occurs, but shortly after it has an associated threat quarantine event. This does not trigger a new compromise. On the other hand, a combination of threat detected, quarantine fail, triggers a compromise event because a secure endpoint, for whatever reason, could not quarantine that threat. What happens when new detection occur on a compromised machine? The detection events are added to the current compromise. No new compromise is created. As you can see in device trajectory where multiple events were recorded. However, when you navigate back to the dashboard, here you can see only one event that shows under compromise observables. Also, only one forensic snapshot is created and the record can be found under the Action Logs tab. Where can I see and manage compromises? Compromises are managed in the Inbox tab in the Secure Endpoint Console. A compromised machine is listed on the Requires Attention section. Please note, compromises are also automatically cleared after one month or 30 days. How can I re-trigger an automated action? It is necessary to clear the compromises prior to an attempt to re-trigger an automated action. Keep in mind that a threat detected plus threat quarantine event is not sufficient to generate a new compromise event. In the last few minutes, I demonstrate both scenarios that were mentioned in this video. I first trigger a non-compromise event where a forensic snapshot is not created and right after the event that triggers compromise where the forensic snapshot is created. First, clear and resolve the inbox to start with clean dashboard. Next, in this test environment, I will copy a known malicious file on the desktop. The result, as you can see in the event log, triggers a series of events. You can see that the threat was detected and quarantined. As you remember from the Q&A section, this is the scenario 
where a forensic snapshot is not created because Secure Endpoint has handled the potential compromise. In other words, the threat was quarantined. You can see that there is no event in the inbox and the only place where you can see this event is the event page or the heat map in the dashboard. In the second recreation, I use a similar file, but instead of manual copy paste, the file I used is a script that places the file on the desktop and immediately deletes the file within five milliseconds. When this action occurs, two things happen. Secure Endpoint detects the file and compares it to its database. The next action, Secure Endpoint tries to remove this threat. However, Secure Endpoint fail at this stage as the file no longer exists in this location. Because quarantine could not proceed, Secure Endpoint marked this threat as compromise dependent on further analysis. Now this event is seen in the inbox. You can also see that a new forensic snapshot was triggered as well. This wraps up the short presentation about automated actions forensic snapshot. I hope you found this video informative and thank you for the time you took to watch it.